This is where the fun begins, the time-honoured blinking LED of success. Creating interfaces for audio and multimedia applications requires knowledge of basic electronics, components, and microprocessors. This is the Arduino Uno. It does not like floating point numbers. Whilst it has a limited range of analog and digital inputs and outputs, it is economically ideal to test, learn, and prototype data input and visualization output. The problems start when you not only need to catalogue the code for your constructions, but also make a record of the circuit and its components. Fritzing.com make a great tool for this purpose. Although I think I'll graduate to KeyCAD as my designs and knowledge solidify. I've been given some boxes of random electronic components to use and recycle. I love these XY parts. Not only can you control two parameters with one finger, I can increase the accuracy and decrease the latency, latency. compared to 7-bit MIDI. We know that 7 bits do not provide enough resolution. The Arduino Uno provides a 10-bit analog to digital converter. At 7 bits we get 0 to 127, but at 10 bits we can wield 0 to 1023. In one of the boxes I found 5 Penny and Giles PGF 7000s. They function like a flat, endless rotary encoder and provide LED visual feedback. They're now discontinued, which I think is a shame. I can think of many uses, granular synthesis control perhaps. Feeding your data into a microprocessor and making lights flash is just the start. For true bi-directional communication, we need to know what the system is thinking. This is a simple OLED screen. It is fun to try and draw an animate different shapes. So, back to business. We have a microprocessor we want to send data into. We also want to receive data back from the construct. Next, we want the system to remember. Then, we want the system to forget. How about plotting some numbers? And then some bigger numbers? Why not both axes with a click button? Or both axes with some text? The next problem you encounter is that of permanence. Breadboard circuits are a temporary construct. They are prone to noise, inadvertent disconnections, and get dusty if they are not housed in a case. These little connectors can pop out if you have to move the circuit from one place to another. Between having the control stuck down with electrical tape and the unpredictability of the breadboard circuit, this is what Chick and Mihai would describe as a flow disruptor. The solution is to build a physical interface to house your controls. Please your wife by removing random items from the loft. A fine tooth saw to fashion some supports. A couple of clamps, a few screws. Check the alignment. Check the wiring. Drill the holes. And solder the pins. It does look untidy, but the connections are permanently attached. I can now remove the shield from the Arduino so it can be used for other purposes without ruining the interface circuit. Whilst there is no immediate practical need, the copper strip board has been added to handle all the power connections. In the future, it will be easy to change the power supply as the interface and circuit develops. Let's check and see if it's wired up correctly and if all four voltage reads are functioning as expected. Here is the future. Two more XY pots, more OLED screens, a motorised fader for haptic feedback experiments, five caterpillars, but all that is a distraction. I need some interface jack inputs for foot switches and CV pedals, which will definitely be next. After that, I need trigger and gate connections from the analog modular. The adaptions will be a challenge, as we need to avoid negative voltages or exceeding five volts or we will risk upsetting the Arduino so much that it stops talking to us. Permanently. 
I need to get my Geiger counter routed, but that is a story for another day.